training, and patience, combined with instinct and grace. It takes years to train an agility champion, but less than 60 seconds to create a top dog. Good afternoon and welcome to the Simons Valley Ranch in Calgary, Alberta. A beautiful afternoon for the first running of the Posse Tracks Investors Group Agility Challenge. A hot day though, I'm Al Stafford, with me Jerry Quincuzzi. And Jerry, that heat is going to affect some of these dogs. These dogs are prime fit and ready for the competition, but you've got to be careful when it's this warm out. We've got an excellent field of dogs, two height categories, jumps of over and under 16 inches. First prize today, a set of agility equipment valued at over $1,500. And the prize for best of opposite is a check for $1,000. Let's take a look at who we'll be watching for today. First in the mini category, we've got Jack jumping in the 10 inch class. He's a miniature pincher. Also Trip, a 16 inch jumper. She's the top Italian greyhound in Canada. Next up, Shimmer, a good summer for Shimmer of consistent clean runs. And also out of Edmonton, Madison, a miniature pincher Sheltie Cross competing in the top levels of agility. Now we go to the bigger dogs in the open class. Ranger jumping in 26 inches. You might have seen Ranger on the Disney TV series, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Also Echo, first competition for Echo today, handled by Ken Fairchild. And finally, two big 26 inches. Nika, a rare breed, Tavurin, a 45 pounder, and Preston, a black lab, Shepherd Cross, who is an expert at the weave poles. While they make final preparations to the course, let's find out a little more about the sport of agility. Even before I bought my first dog, I wanted to get into the sport of agility. Yeah, I saw the super dogs on another network years and years ago, and I thought, this is just a fantastic sport. Agility is a team sport between a dog and handler. Uh, they run a, an obstacle course. The, the object of the game is to run it smoothly, so the dog and, and handler should run in tandem together and uh, do all the obstacles in the order that they're placed. Uh, I usually tell them it's sort of like equestrian riding. Uh, for horses, that there's a course and everybody usually goes, yeah, yeah. And then I start telling them about, well, there's a lot of jumps and then there's tunnels and there's things they climb on like up and down a teeter and they go up and down a teeter, you know. <laughs> so we have a, everything from starters up to a master's level and at the starters level you have all different heights. You've got heights from a very small dog to, a, 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 to the high ones. Actually, the, that's the, the nice thing about agility. It's open to all breeds, mixed breeds, um, purebreds, whatever kind of dog you've got. It's good for all levels, which is great. It gives you something really fun to do with your dogs so that they're not just stuck at home. You're trying to find an activity that you can both enjoy, and the agility seemed like a lot of fun, and everyone in it has a very positive attitude, and the training methods with the dogs are very positive, so that really attracted me. First place in qualifying is 1020 Daisy. Yay! All right. Yay, Daisy finally did it. All right. Congratulations. In third place, Nikki and Kalua. <laughs> All the contact zones that you see, we have the teeter, the dog walk, and the wall. You'll see two colors on them, and all of the bottom parts of them have yellow. A dog must place one foot at least in those yellow contact zones uh, for safety. Um, and if they don't, then they get faulted five faults, and that goes uh, as an added fault on top of their time. Those are the weave poles, and they're one of the hardest obstacles to learn. They, and uh, they have to go through them in a sequence. You can have the dog go on either side of the weave poles. And you'll notice that different dogs go very fast and others go very slow. So it is a very hard obstacle for them to learn. You watch him weave and it's incredible. He just, he's just so fluid going through them, incredibly fast. He's been known to do them in four seconds of full set. He's amazing. He's a really, that's his favorite, I'd say, without a doubt. The first couple of times that dogs are going to be scared or intimidated or, or just weird. It's just all these people, all these other dogs, the smells, the noises, everything that goes on. You just got to see it through. 
since I run it because the dogs love it so much is one reason that dogs just get a kick out of it. But the other part is, is there's a lot of strategy to it that you don't necessarily see as an outsider until you've done it for a while. Because the dogs, if you've got a fast dog, they go so quickly that if your command is just a tiny bit late or even too early, they might turn too soon and miss something, turn too late and miss something. So you've got to strategize while you're out there. It's almost like a weekend outing for all of us. Um, this is like a big picnic, so it's really nice to be able to spend the weekend together. Jerry, what are the competitors looking for on this course? This is a nice, tight, fast course. Two jumps to the wall, two jumps with a rather difficult turn into the tunnel, out of the tunnel over the dog walk, two more jumps with a very sharp turn, a jump into the weave poles, weave poles to the chute, very difficult here. Shoot into the tunnel, out of the tunnel, a long run to the jump, a spread jump to the teeter, and then a nice smooth ending home. Well, the agility course is set. The handlers look to be about ready. We'll be back with the competition in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Calgary. I'm Al Stafford, along with color commentator Jerry Quinn Cousy, and we're getting set for the mini height competition in this agility challenge. Our first competitor is Minx, a Sheltie mini Australian shepherd cross, handled by Marlene Nesmonteith of Vernon, B.C. And Marlene has her hands full with this spirited dog. She always walks the edge of being brilliant or being completely out of control, so... <laughs> Well, Minx and Marlene look to be about set to go, and Minx is over the first jump now and headed up towards the A-frame. Have to make contact with the yellow. That looks pretty good for Minx. A uh, very active dog in terms of a lot of barking while on the course. Through the tunnel and up over the dog walk very quickly. Ooh, bad, bad handler error there. And it looks like it missed the yellow contact area on the way down. A couple more quick jumps, a tight turn that Minx slides on a little bit. Now into the weave pole. Missed the entrance there. That'll cost a little bit of time. Oh, Look. missed that last pole. Ha was focused on the chute. And now a little trouble coming out of the chute as well. Back in through the tunnel, though. And headed towards the final part of the course. Minx is doing an awful lot of barking here. It's hard to hear your handler when you're barking so much. The jumps, the tire, and uh, that's it. Not a bad run for Minx, but a little bit of trouble in the center section just falls right off the dog walk, not paying any attention to where she's going, but here we're focusing on that shoot and miss the last weave pole. Very common problem for dogs. Our next competitor is Kiri, handled by Ken Fairchild out of Fall City, Washington, and Kiri is a U.S. agility dog champion. We pick up Kiri coming down the A-frame, good contact on the yellow there. Ken's running this differently, he's running it on the outside of the course. Through the tunnel, a nice, easy, loping style. Could cost Ken in terms of some time later on. Kiri is now over the dog walk, headed for the Ooh, jumps. Oh, dear. Oh, that's a problem. The jump gets knocked over by the handler. What happens in that situation, Jerry? That's going to cost them five points. Unfortunately, the jump is down before the dog goes over it. Nice job there going through the weave and now through the chute. And here comes Kiri back through the tunnel and headed for those next two jumps as it sets up the last part of the course. No problem with the jumps at all. Here comes Kiri on the teeter. Oh, and a stop for a nice little pose for the crowd. Anybody who wants to take a photograph can do that. A jump, a tire, a jump, and Kiri's finished. Unfortunately, Ken gets out of position here and knocks a bar. That's really too bad. He was having a great round with this little dog. Watch this little dog in the weave pose. Ken's going to pull it toward the chute at the last pull. Watch his hand as he brings the dog in. Our next competitor is Pistol, a beautiful Blue Merle Shetland Sheepdog handled by Barb Davis out of Newman Lake, Washington. And Barb has two dogs in the competition this afternoon. Pistol sometimes has a great run, but sometimes he does his own thing. He's more independent than, than Shimmer is, so I have to watch him a little closer. And uh, so when the challenge today, where Shimmer's my more consistent dog, so he's my more hopeful. But it always seems like when Shimmer blows it, pistol comes through so <laughs> so we have a backup dog more or less there pistol now out on the course getting up over that a frame nice and careful down the back side good in the contact zone nice turn go, 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 go. into the tunnel now out quickly and headed straight for the dog walk nice easy down good contact very good control so far nice tight turn there through those two jumps and now into the weave poles Nice weaving, nice. Oh, goodness, missed the last one. Focused on that shoot. That's going to be a trick this course. 
So that's five faults now for Pistol, but the handler brings her back through and lets her go through and back through the chute one more time. Now back into the tunnel, this time the reverse, and then heading into the latter part of the course. Over the jumps, onto the teeter-totter. Nice contact zone on the bottom. And a nice clean finish there for Pistol. Pistol has a wonderful entrance to the weave poles here, moves nicely through them, but focuses on the shoot and misses that last weave pole. Barb calls her back and redoes the weave poles. Now let's take a look at the life of our next competitor away from the agility course. That was Madison on her first day home. She was pretty lively. She was, when we got her, she weighed two and a half pounds. Um, she was nine weeks old. She used to sit in the palm of my hand and as she got bigger, I used to sit and do, watch TV and do arm curls with her sitting in my hand and, and do little arm curls, and she quite enjoyed that, but can't do that anymore with her. I think my first memory is that we went and to buy her, and she was this little tiny, you know, one and a half pound, two pound dog with an attitude. We kind of started to watch her play ball and thought, well, she's kind of a pretty good little athlete for a little dog, and she enjoys to play, and she enjoys to go out there and do things, and so, Kirsten talked about dog agility, and one day I saw an article in the paper, as a matter of fact, on agility, and I went and I showed it to her and said, why don't you give him a call and see if you want to get involved, and she did, and now she's a fanatic. She's involved, she loves it, and uh, Madison is involved as well, she loves it too. She was not very good when she first started out. Um, she had had a little accident and broke her leg as a puppy, and that was sort of when she was five, six months old, which was an important time in her puppy development, and she lost some of the confidence that she came home with. So we were looking for something fun to do with her. She was very intimidated by the other dogs because all the other dogs in the class were big dogs. and So um, she wasn't very good. It took us about six months before we could even like go from one obstacle to the next. Um, but she came, once she clicked, it just came really quickly for her. And she was, she's been a lot of fun to train with. The fact that she's gotten to her master's level right now in agility, I think, is a, you know, a tribute probably to Kirsten and to Madison for their perseverance. Madison is the dog that doesn't like to practice but loves the competition. And here we see Madison going through the weed poles now, very slow and deliberate as she makes her way into the chute. Slow and steady is often important here rather than fast and blasting through. Through the tunnel without any problem, over the jumps leading into the teeter. Oh, what a little ham. Look at this. Loves the crowd attention. Kirsten looks like she's gonna have some trouble getting the dog off the teeter there. Oh, uh, here we go. Down into the yellow contact zone. The jump, the tire, and the final jump, and that wraps things up for Madison. Madison is going into this very nicely, but you'll watch and see that Kirsten hangs back a wee bit here as Madison looks back for her, and that gets her to pause on the teeter-totter. Welcome back to the Agility Challenge in Calgary. Let's take a look at what is undoubtedly the toughest obstacle these dogs face on the course. These are the weave poles that we do in agility. They're one of the most difficult obstacles for the dogs to learn. They are, from the dog's perspective, just a straight line. They're a very difficult obstacle for the dogs to learn. These are the guide wires that we use on the poles. You can see how the wires are on the poles and they're going to direct the dog in the right direction going through the weave poles. This is Scamp. This is the dog that I'm going to try and teach weave poles to. Scamp is a Cocker Spaniel cross and this is his owner, Deborah. Scamp has never seen weave poles before, so we're going to do a little bit of work with Scamp. I'm going to take him first and show Deborah what I expect her to do with Scamp. I have food in my right hand. Are you ready, Scamp? Going to go weave. Now we're a little unsure. Oh, there it is. In. Weave. In. Weave. In. What a boy! What a good dog! The next step, once Scamp feels comfortable going weave here, weave here, is what we call the weave pole shuffle. And it's footwork with the owner that helps the dog. The shuffle is you're moving your legs to help guide the dog. So I'm going to step into the dog, weave away from the dog. Here, into the dog, weave out, weave here. So I'm going in, out, in, out with my feet, and I'm assisting the dog in getting that movement in, out, in, out in the weave pole. So it's weave here, weave here, weave 
here. What a boy! What a good dog, Scamp. This is a little dog now that's just learning the very basics of wee pulling, but you can see it coming. He's starting to understand a little bit about moving in and out and getting that one, two, one, two movement on his feet. Wouldn't take him very long to learn how to do this properly. This is Eli. He's a five-year-old Australian cattle dog. We've been doing agility for about two years now, but we did start off at the same level Scamp just did. So it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice to get where we are right now. Let's go do weave poles, Eli. Are you ready? Go weave. That's it. What a boy. This is what you're looking for. You can see the in and out movement. I'm not doing the foot movement anymore because my dog is past that stage. I'm working distance now where I can get away from him. And that's what I'm working on is trying to send him to the weave poles rather than stand beside him. This dog loves this. Are you ready? Go weave, go weave, weave. What a boy. Wow, a nice light touch there in the weave poles by Eli. Our next competitor is Shimmer handled by Barb Davis, and Shimmer is another one of those dogs who seems to handle the weave poles particularly well. Here comes Shimmer now through the first couple of jumps. Very quick over the A-frame. Nice contact there in the yellow contact zone. Nice tight corner there. Quickly gallops through the tunnel and then races over the dog walk. Another nice corner handling by Barb. Wonderful handling here. Here come the weave poles. Overshoots them and then enters incorrectly between the second and third poles. Oh, and misses the last pole. Looks like Barb is going to take Shimmer back a little ways to correct the poles. Wow, she's going way back on the course to the jumps that lead into the poles. She's decided to get this dog to do it correctly and just enforce the correct way. And misses it again. Dear me. End of the shoot. And then out into the latter part of the course, the jumps leading up to the teeter. Nice contact here. Good finish for Shimmer. Very quick run for Shimmer, but a lot of time faults because of the problems in the weave pulls. Here, Barb's reinforcing the contact zone on the wall. A nice tight corner brings her dog around very well for the jump. Shimmer's going a little fast here, misses the entrance, then comes back and enters between the second and third poles. Barb brings her back. It really had a nice flow. The dog's got to open up at the end and have it nice turn around. And, uh, and there's been a, some real good dogs pass. And one of them wasn't me, darn, but that's the way it goes. So, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Our next competitor is already out on the course. This is Tonka, handled by Terry Kuntz out of Calgary. Ooh, missed a contact there. Tonka! And Tonka seems to want to entertain the crowd. <laughs> We're just having a great time. Tonka's a young dog and is just loves this, but is a little over exuberant here. Tonka! Come here! Oh my goodness, it looks like the, this run is pretty much uh, irretrievable uh, for Terry Kuntz. She's going to make the dog get over top of the dog walk, though. But that's about it for Tonka. Our next competitor is Trip, an Italian greyhound, and a quick one at that, handled by Linda Smith out of Edmonton. And Linda can best be described as a dog lover. They are charming, endearing little creatures. And uh, Trippy was not what they wanted for a show specimen, so I took her. I figured, how much hassle can a nine pound dog be? So I took her home and I have never looked back from that day. She's awesome. She does agility, she does fly ball, she does centerling, she does obedience, she does pet visitations, and she has excelled in all of them. What can I say? This is my humble abode. Over the years, I have accumulated, as you can see here, a, a great a collection. I won't even take you upstairs and show you the other rooms with the maybe not so nicer stuff. Up here, we have what is called the iCart collection. Um, he was a lovely um, painter that branched into sculptures and did some lovely work. Over here I have what I call my bronze pieces, my favorite one being the Whip It with the Ball. I like antique shopping, I like to go buying, and um, it just, just carried on. I filled up cupboards and cupboards and cupboards of these things. 
The nice thing about a lot of these statues is that there's no height definition. So what could be a whippet can be a greyhound and it can be an Italian greyhound. All three of the breeds have so many of the similar attributes. This is one place that you wouldn't hurt my feelings if you told me I look like my dog, you know, big chest, long legs, skinny waist. First three years that we actively competed, she flew to the top and we seem to have plateaued. Uh, the heart is there, the willingness is there, but for some reason the titles aren't as um, easily come to as the beginning. So we're, we're still struggling, but that's half the fun. And earlier today we had the chance to ask Linda how tough it is to control a quick dog on the course. What I have to watch is a lot what happened today where um, she likes to work very far away from me. She likes to work very quickly, very fast. And when you get too many angles and too many obstacles crowded in together, I can't react fast enough and she starts picking and choosing on her own. And then we get just whatever's happening out there. So that's mostly what happens. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at how Trip handles the course today. Pretty quick over the first couple of jumps. No real surprise, though. Linda mentioned that her dog is awful fast. Very close to missing that contact zone there. Nice into the tunnel, up over the dog walk. Trip is a slower dog today. Maybe not just quite as fast as normal. Getting her contact, though. Around the jumps now. Nice high arc over that jump there into the weed poles. There we go, picking up speeds. Nice, nice. We all oh, got the shoot. Beautiful. Very deliberate through the weed poles there, but then quick into the shoot. Quick as well into the tunnel. We went back through the tunnel. That is too bad. That'll cost Linda in faults there on the contact zone through the last jumps in the tire and a quick finish for Trip. Here Trippy is going into the tunnel. Watch Linda's hand. She keeps it down, doesn't bring it up to put pull the dog out of the tunnel. Linda's going to be so very disappointed. She was having such a great run with Trip. Well, no clean run so far on the leaderboard, but Trip and Kiri with just five course faults so far. Maximum time for the course is just 53 seconds. Anything above that means a time fault. We're back with more coverage in Calgary after this. Well, the handlers and the dogs are enjoying a glorious afternoon here in Calgary. Communication really the key when you're dealing with agility competition. And Kate Whitehead has found a unique way to communicate with her dog. Claire is five and a half years old. And uh, when she was a year, I started to suspect that she wasn't hearing well anymore. I knew that she had heard well up to that point. Um, so I started you know, testing her at home, and then I took her to the University of Saskatchewan and had her tested, and she was certainly deaf. It's made me more aware of what I do with my body. I mean, all dogs react to body language, but if you have a dog that can hear, if you give them the wrong body language message, you can pull it out of the fire by screaming at the dog. <laughs> but when the dog can't hear, you have to get it right, or else they go the wrong way. What I use for agility, I've developed myself. It's, um, it's just based on body language. You know, for instance, if I want the dog to take a tunnel, I get very low and point to the tunnel because it's low down. If I want the dog to take a piece of contact equipment, I stand very straight and direct up because they're going up. So then if the two things are together, the dog can discriminate between the two based on what I'm doing with my body. I mean, it's, I think it's made me a better trainer for my dogs that can hear because I realize that no, the dog's not being perverse or anything like that. It's just that I haven't given the correct information. You just have to develop signals that work well for your dog and use it consistently. She was, uh, I think, number six agility dog in, in Canada last year. And two years ago, she was number six border collie in obedience. You know, she can do that. You can do stuff with your deaf yes. dog. Good girl. Well, let's see how Flair makes out this afternoon on the course with her handler, Kay Whitehead. Up quickly on the A-frame, very carefully down, almost picking the dog's way down the course there. In through the tunnel, nicely and very quickly through. Up over top of the dog walk now. Very careful on that contact point down at the bottom. See how the dog is turning around looking for Kay's direction. Since she can't hear, she has to look. 
through that last jump. Now waiting for some instruction on the weave pulls. Now through the weave pulls. Nice job, careful, but fairly quick. Oh, oh loses her concentration. That's unusual for Flair. Flair's gonna take a run, another one run at those weave pulls there. Through and now into the chute. Looking at her owner again to get some direction. Out of the tunnel, no problem there. A couple of quick jumps and heading now over to the teeter, very quickly off the teeter. And a quick finish for Flair. Not bad, not bad at all. See how Kate brings her hands down and claps? That's just to get the dog's attention. Watch her arms way out to indicate that jump, way out again to indicate what jump to take. Next up is Jinx, handled by Kimberly Anderson Plummer, and we asked her how she was going to approach the course today. Um, with Jinx, she will, because of her speed, she will, you know, cut an angle to get to the next obstacle faster, so I've got to make sure that I watch her speed, mostly, because that, I mean, things can go wrong real fast with, with a dog that's got a lot of speed. And here's Jinx on the course, and you can see from these tight turns and the quickness of the animal that Kimberly has her hands full. Jinx is a very fast-moving dog. Kim also does herding with this dog, and we'll hear Kim use a herding command sometimes. That'll do. That's a herding command that she uses. Beautiful weave pulls, fast, into the chute. Wonderful. Very quick, now into the tunnel reverse, and then through to the jumps as they get ready for the teeter. And uh, coming up to the end of the course, a very quick run for Jinx. Wonderful. This little turnaround will cost her a couple of seconds. Good call back. Excellent run here. Oh, Jinx looks at the dog walk, but Kim calls her back very well. Look at these weave pulls, how very fast they are. What an excellent run by Jinx. So quick. Our next competitor in the 22-inch category is Echo, another border collie. And Echo is handled by Ken Fairchild, a two-and-a-half-year-old dog. And let's see how Echo does here on the course today. Nice and calm there at the start. Quick command, and we're underway. None of the dogs seem to have had a trouble with the early part of the course. Those first couple of jumps, and then right into that yellow contact area there on the A-frame. Nice call back onto the dog walk there. This is a tight turn, getting into the next segment of the course, but Echo handles it very well. Now the weave pulls. Oh, look at the speed on these weave pulls. Very nice. Through the chute. Here, front, front, here. Back through the tunnel here. one more time. Over. Well, it's going to be awfully close here between Echo and some of the other competitors in this class. Quick Kenna. on the teeter. Ken is running a wonderful course. Outstanding effort there by Echo. Ken handles his dog a bit differently. See how he comes way out here where many of the other handlers stay in? These weave poles are absolutely incredible. The dog is so fast. It's just incredible. Nice clean run by Echo. 36.93 seconds on the clock. They're going to adjust the heights now. We're going to go to the 10-inch category. Our first competitor in that category is Duffy, a West Highland white terrier. And like most terriers, Duffy has a bit of a mind of his own. Well, it is a master's course, which is actually a little bit harder than the level we're in. So uh, we're just going to just try to go out there and run it as cleanly as possible. And uh, we don't expect too much, but have fun mostly. Just mostly have fun. Don't get too upset with these things, eh, Duffy? Yeah, we don't get too upset. And as you can see, Duffy doesn't often do what the handler wants him to do necessarily, but likes to make his own way around the course. Pretty comfortable with these low 10-inch jumps. Doesn't mind going through the tunnel too bit, but avoided the A-frame there in the early part of the course. Oops, and this is the dog walk too. Duffy's not going to put too much exertion into this today, I don't think. Nice slow pace now over the dog walk, and he's got a couple of tight jumps when he gets down here at the bottom of it. Oh, there goes Duffy's attention. He stopped all together, and it looks like that's it. His handler said that's enough, and uh, away they go. Here, Mary is just a wee bit too far away from the dog walk, and Duffy just misses the whole idea of what to do. Turns around and makes a nice walk on. And here, Duffy's being a terrier. Oh, there's somebody over here to visit. I think I'll go visit him and just loses his focus totally. Well, there's a lot on the line here in Calgary. In fact, some of the biggest prize money ever offered for an agility competition. Let's take a look now at a little dog that could win that big purse. Jack, he's a little independent soul. He's a miniature pincher. Um, they're not shrunken Dobermans, what a lot of people think. Um, they actually come from a German pincher. It's about 20 inches at the shoulder that was crossed with um, an Italian Greyhound and a Dachshund way back when, and they're actually an older breed than the Doberman pincher. He um, trains a lot of agility and fly ball, so that's a lot of jumping. 
he naturally just exercises himself running around playing with his friends in the house. We didn't really start competing until he was almost two. He's um, only had one injury, but it wasn't from uh, agility. It's been chasing cats in the backyard. He pulled a groin muscle, so he had to miss a few agility tournaments. But for the most part, we try and warm up the dogs, much like athletes. We do little exercises to warm them up and stretch their muscles out. Well, I do things where I try and stretch, stretch his back muscle, like I, you know, bring food and I, I stretch his head this way and the other way and bringing his head through here and then pulling straight out and stretching. I, I let him stand up on top and reach for the food to pull his spine. The breed itself is a very high intelligent breed and I find when I'm training is that he learns the exercises quite quickly and figures a better way to do them, the jack way. <laughs> Well, let's find out if the jack way is the best way this afternoon. Here he comes down off the A-frame. He gets nice height on these early jumps in the competition. Heads towards the tunnel, in and out very quickly, and up to the walk. Jack is a very tidal agility dog. He does very well at this. Over the jump, nice tight corner. Patty's right with him. Here we go to the weave poles now. Oh, nose down and goes past the entrance of the weave poles. That's going to cost Patty, unfortunately. But look at Jack pick up speed here. Isn't this great? Five course faults for the miss on the weave poles. He's through the chute nicely. Uh, a quick uh, 360 turn back the reverse way through the tunnel. And he's heading for the latter part of the course now. A couple of quick jumps and then to the teeter. Jack is not setting his course today. He's doing a good job of staying with Patty. Nice finish. Unfortunately, Jack has his nose down and runs past the weave pole entrance, but a nice call back by Patty. She gets him around and gets a correct entry on the weave poles. Here he jumps off the side, but he still manages to touch the contact zone. Now we're taking a look at Chevy, a Jack Russell Terrier, handled by Terry Kuntz out of Calgary. His run has been clean so far as he heads towards the teeter, which signifies that he's nearing the end of the course. He slows down what slightly. Run, what a run, go, go, One go. jump, yes. and he's done. That was an incredible race by a little dog. He wasn't exceptionally fast, but he's very accurate, and that's what counts. No faults, accuracy on this course. Great run by this little dog. A time of 53.13 seconds for Chevy. 13 one-hundredths of a second for a time fall, but that is enough to put Chevy at the top of the 10-inch jump height standings, and also Chevy is the leader in the final standings for dogs under 16 inches. Now in the 22 inch category, Echo is the leader with a clean run and a time of 36.93 seconds. Question is, can anybody beat Echo when we come back? The final jump height from Calgary. Welcome back. You know, Border Collies tend to be some of the best performers in agility and one of the reasons for that is their instinct. Daisy he comes to the country. sees what the country is all about. You know, she purring night, and right away into the car, she hops, and uh, and you tell her it's agility, and she's right away in the car because they love agility. And then she purring it, same thing. You tell her as soon as you say the word sheep, stop, ah, ah, we're right in there. Border collies are such a neat breed of dog, but like I've had dogs for a long time and I've never had a dog as easy to train as this one. <laughs> and they just seem to excel at everything they do. And uh, so when I heard about it, I was like, well, okay, I got Border Collie, why not try sheep herding? Yeah, you have to get them around the other side. Now, wait to me. And basically what we're doing is anytime she'd try and dive in, well, we let her the first few times simply, you know, to wear off some steam. Um, but after she's worn off a little bit of steam and figure, okay, you can actually start working now, it's not play. The Border Collies do it fairly naturally, so it's quite easy with them. Uh, some of the other herding breeds, like the, the Sheltie and the Australian Shepherd and the Blue Heeler, they have a little bit more instinct too, and there's other herding ones, but <clears throat> a lot of, the, I mean, you could even teach a poodle to do, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> And the first thing you want to get them doing is just going in circles around the sheep as far away as possible so that the further they stay out, the less the sheep are apt to move and everything. And, uh, but you get a dog like her that doesn't have that, that great an instinct. And it's kind of like if the sheep aren't moving, look, why should I be here? I'll go eat some grass or something instead. This is Peggy. She's 
nine weeks old, and this will be her first little attempt at seeing sheep, so we'll see what she does. We've got another dog to help Peggy out so that she doesn't lose her sheep. But we'll put her down, see first off if she doesn't leave. Come on, Peggy. Peggy. Peggy, you puppy. Come on, Peggy. Come on, Peggy. Come on, Peggy. Guess what? We've got sheep for you. Well, we've had anything from little teeny puppies that are just coming to get more socialized because we don't expect a lot from them. Or we've had some that have been like seven years old for the first time. The purebred Border Collie seems pretty much born with an instinct to herd. So that seems to be about the best as the bloodlines. And then next, I guess, would be uh, if they have a willingness to do things for the owner. Like even a Border Collie that doesn't want, doesn't want to uh, try to do anything for their owner is pretty useless as a herding dog as well. So you do have to have some control over it and some respect from the dog for the owner and then, it, then it'll try to do everything for you just to please you. Are you real proud of yourself, eh? Oh yeah. It's a fun thing to do and it's a good thing to do and it exercises the dog and it exercises me and <laughs> you know, we meet some really neat people out here and uh, I enjoy it. Jim Mills of Calgary handles a talented border collie by the name of Ranger. We asked Jim about strategy for today. I'm going to go out and try to do the best I can. And, uh, there's some wonderful, wonderful dogs here and just go have fun with it. The amazing thing about Ranger is Ranger's the first dog that Jim Mills has ever owned and Ranger has already become an agility trial champion of Canada and a North American agility trial champion. Let's see how Ranger does this afternoon. Up over the eighth frame Come very on, go, quickly, go, 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 a couple go, go, go. of quick jumps and right into the tunnel and headed for the walk. Rangers making good time so far. He's moving very quickly today. Nice jumping, nice tight turns. Jim is handling very well. This is where it gets tricky now, into the weave. Wrong entry into the weaves, that's too bad. A quick recovery though by Ranger and now as Ranger heads for the chute and the tunnel once again. Still very good time. Jim and his dog work very well together. Jim's always in the right position and Ranger knows exactly where to go. Couple more jumps and the tire and a nice finish there by finish. Ranger. Oh, this is where Ranger misses the weave pole entrance. Jim does a very nice call back though and gets his dog turned around and in correctly. Getting ready now is our next competitor, Preston, an all Canadian black lab shepherd cross handled by Rainey McNeed Darrow. And we asked Rainey a little earlier today about her goals for the competition. Completing it without any faults, <laughs> that'll be a big challenge. Uh, most likely uh, keeping jumps up, getting contacts, they're, they're everyone's concerns I think. It's, it depends on the day as to whether we're going to miss contacts or whether we're going to knock bars. It's, each round is different, each course is different, you know, it's a 50-50. We either get it or we don't. Preston eager as he steps up and gets ready to go. One of the heaviest dogs in the competition today and that would certainly make it more difficult for his handler to get him ready oh for the competition. Oh my goodness, he missed his wa dog walk. Oh, Preston. Well, she's gonna take him back the now. The pressure's off. <laughs> she's right, the pressure is off. Back to the tunnel we go, and they're gonna try the walk one more time. Does it this time beautifully. Nice turn. Oh, there go the bars. Preston can be out of control sometimes. Look at those weave poles, incredible. Great on the weave, quick through the chute. Back through the tunnel one more time, a couple more jumps and headed for the teeter. Oh, he misses his, he's off course. Unfortunately, that does it for Rainey and Preston. Not the kind of result that Rainey was hoping for this afternoon. Jerry, what happened in that situation? Unfortunately, they're not working as a team here. Preston is running his own course and doing his own thing. It's really too bad for Rainey. Here, Rainey turns her back on the dog and doesn't give him the proper command. And then Preston just gets a little out of control and starts knocking bars. Too bad. Our next competitor is Becky at Tavern, trained by Diane Mills out of Calgary. And Becky is already an obedience and fly ball champion and is a very quick dog. The way I trained her, I, I trained her to do the obstacles a certain way. And if she gets going too fast or just gets distracted, then she doesn't do them that way and I miss the contact zone. So the contacts are the things I worry about the most. As we mentioned earlier today, quickness is a key element here, but it's not the most important thing necessarily on the course, although Becky has been very quick through this course so far. 
Oh dear, there goes the bar. Watch Becky's jumping style. She has a different style of jumping and landing, which sometimes causes her problems. Very quick so far through the weed pole. Oh poles. darn, missed that last pole again. That's been a problem spot for a lot of dogs this afternoon. Through the tunnel now, two more jumps, and then Becky heads for the teeter. Nice handling these jumps. She's doing a very good job. A quick finish, probably one of the quickest finishes we've seen this afternoon. Here she enforces the contact on the wall, and because of Becky's speed here, she flies through and misses that last weave pole again. Two more dogs to go. We'll have those for you when we return to Calgary. <laughs> Welcome back to Calgary. This enthusiastic crowd really seems to be enjoying things here this afternoon. There's Nika, our next competitor, another Tavurin, trained by Case Lawn out of Maple Ridge, BC. We had a chance to talk with Case earlier today, and he says his dog has trouble with one particular obstacle. The difficult one that we have is the uh, contact on the A-frame. That is our uh, problem. We've uh, been having to deal with that for years. That she'll get about an inch close to it and then she'll pop off. And at practice, she'll be great at it, but when you come out to the trial, they make you humble. Well, we'll find out if Nika has trouble with the A-frame today because it's an obstacle the dog faces early on in the competition. And it looks like the training has paid off for Case Lawn. No problems for Nika on the A-frame today. Through the tunnel now, and the dog heads for the walk. Slows down a wee bit here. That'll cost him some time. This dog was seventh in Canada last year. A wonderful running dog. Nice quick on the turns there. Another quick jump and into the weave poles. Picks up speed nicely here. Oh, dear. Nice recovery. Through the chute, back through the tunnel the other way. Two more jumps, setting up the final major obstacle, which is the teeter. And then the jumps, and Nico will be finished. Nice finish. Look at him go. What a nice working team. Here, Case reinforces the bottom early on to make sure he gets a good one. Beautiful handling of these jumps. Look at how he swings around and brings his dog around. This is the unfortunate part with the weave poles. He pops out. That cost Case five points right there. That leaves us now with our final competitor of the afternoon and a final chance to catch the leader, Echo. This is Taz, an Australian Shepherd, trained by Rick Dukeman from Calgary, Alberta. Let's see if Taz has enough today to catch the leader. Go through. Nice height Go there on those Taz. jumps, and as Taz heads through the first Come tunnel, on, a loping style, not particularly fast, right now, but certainly right a lot of confidence. Taz and Rick run very well as a couple. Just so close, Taz is always paying attention to where Rick is. Look at these weave poles. Very quick through the weave poles and clean through the weave poles as well, which is very important if Taz wants to have a chance to catch Echo. Reverse through the tunnel, a couple jumps to go. Taz heads for the teeter, and this is going to be close. Rick is charging him up. Look at them go. Wow, that's going to be a close one. Now you watch Taz turn a very tight corner here. Rick is encouraging him on, making him go. Look at the dog jump. Beautiful. Easy off that teeter and in the home stretch, just flying. Wonderful dog, beautiful jumper. And that's our final competitor for the afternoon. A clean run for Taz, but was Taz fast enough? It'll take a few seconds before they post the final time. Let's take a look at the leaderboard now. No, not quite enough. The difference, 52 one hundredths of a second. Echo is the winner in the 16 inch and over category. And that means that Chevy is the best of opposite for today. Now let's go back to the course for the awards presentation. Chevy, and Chevy wins $1,000. Congratulations. Well done. And that's a bank money order for $1,000. And a certificate. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do, uh, do <laughs> hey, Chevy. Hey. There's a happy team. That clean round for Chevy's what did it for them. And the winner of the uh, Aussie Tracks uh, equipment is Eco. Woo! Good dog. Yeah. All right. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. You're the top dog. Here's a certificate for the equipment. And here's the your ribbon. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll have some comments from the winners when we return to Calgary in just a moment. There's Chevy, winner of the best of opposite, $1,000 to Chevy's owner. Let's hear now from the winners this afternoon. It's a shock. I didn't think I had a chance with all those Shelties, but, you know, she's 
When she wants to work good, she can work darn good. <laughs> good girl. What a good dog. And today's top dog was Echo. I think I'm a pretty good expert with my own dog. I've spent a lot of time building a good foundation with her, kind of like what you do with Olympic athletes. I spent countless hours with her um, building a foundation, um, building her skills. So when I got out here, I knew what she was capable of doing and what I was capable of doing with her. So I really wasn't all that nervous going out there because I was confident that she could handle the challenges that were set in front of her. Well, six dogs went clean in the over 16-inch category this afternoon, but Echo was the fastest, finishing in a time of 36.93 seconds, and that earned her owner $1,500 worth of equipment, a nice victory for Ken Fairchild. There's a final look at the leaderboard this afternoon. On behalf of my color commentator, Jerry Quincuzzi, this is Al Stafford saying so long from Calgary.